Metal Jesus here, and I'm back again with a video that's gonna be all about capturing gameplay footage. Now, I have over 300 videos on my channel, and almost all of those have gameplay footage in them. And it's a bit of a challenge for me because I have over 40 years worth of games to capture depending on what that, that video we're working on that week. It can be anything from the Atari 2600 all the way up to a PC running Steam or even handhelds and maybe an iPad or iPhone. Now, I'd love to tell you that there's just one solution to doing all that, but there's not. But I've learned an awful lot making these videos and capturing footage. And so today, I'm gonna share the solutions I have come up with. I think you guys are gonna really find this valuable. Let's take a look. So you wanna capture footage from the late 70s and the early 80s, how do you do that? Well, you really have two formats that sort of dominated at the time, and that was composite and RF. Now the Atari 2600 and also some other consoles like the Intellivision, the ColecoVision, they had RF and you're seeing that right here. This is basically a format that dominated for a long time. And what's interesting about it is that the video and the audio is in one cable. How do you capture that? Well, there's no device out there that I know of that will directly capture that. The best way to do this is to hook it up to an old school VCR. The VCR will convert that RF signal to composite. For a long time on my channel, for almost the first 100 videos, I used a capture device called the Elgato TV, which you see here. Now I wanna mention, none of this video is sponsored in any way. These are simply the, the devices that I use. And the Elgato I use because I am primarily on Mac. And this device here captured composite and also S-Video. But more importantly, it's really easy to use. Here's where I wanna mention something that's a bit controversial and that is emulation. Not everyone's a big fan of emulating games and consoles, but I feel like there are certain circumstances where it can actually give you a better result, especially when it comes to these really old systems like the Atari, the Intellivision, the ColecoVision. It can be a lot easier to capture the footage this way, a lot cleaner. It looks a lot better on, let's say, a modern television or a monitor than trying to capture the RF signal. And I've done it several times on my channel. Now, it's not the same as playing the real console, so keep that in mind, but it is an option for a lot of people. Moving through the 80s, we get to the mighty Nintendo Entertainment System, but also some other consoles like the Sega Master System. Like I mentioned before, these two consoles and many of this era supported the yellow composite cable out, which the Elgato works perfectly with. But that's not necessarily the best option. For some people actually, modding your console might be the best option. For instance, there's people out there that will mod a TurboGrafx-16 to have a much better output. Same with the Master System or the original NES. So I just wanna mention that. Now, if you're interested in modding your console, I'm gonna put some links down in the description below. You should definitely check it out because often you can get really great results. All right, well, let's move into the 1990s now where things start to get a little bit interesting. Now, the good news is that almost every console of the 1990s supported composite out. That's a good thing because you only need one type of connection, you only need one type of device. It's super easy and again, for a long time, this is exactly what I did for my entire game room. But it's not necessarily the best way. For instance, both my Panasonic 3DO and my Sega Saturn are connected via S-Video. And S-Video looks a ton better. Also, I wanna mention that up to this point, we're primarily talking about consoles set up in North America. Now, this is not necessarily the best way that you could possibly do it because in other parts of the world, like Europe, they actually use SCART RGB connections that are significantly better than composite. So if you're really serious about getting the best video quality out of some of these old systems, look up SCART RGB. At the end of the 1990s, you get the Sega Dreamcast, which I wanna talk about because, well, one, it's such a great console and it supports composite out, which is cool, 
but it also has this really cool feature. It supports VGA out, which is very PC-like and looks fantastic on a modern television. Now, all you have to do is you have to get this little conversion box here. Not very expensive, but man, it is so worth it and looks great when you capture footage. Moving ahead to the 2000s, we're still mostly that yellow composite cable on consoles, which is starting to show its age a bit, especially as TVs get bigger. So TVs started introducing higher resolutions. You start seeing 480p, 720p, 1080i, 1080p, and consoles had to keep up with that. And here's where you started to see component cables for consoles. These are systems like the original Xbox, the GameCube, as well as the PlayStation 2, and even the Wii. The good news is the games and output looks way better on component than it did in composite. The downside is, is that depending on the console and the game, you might get a different resolution every single time. That meant for me, I needed to upgrade my capture device and I went for the Elgato Game Capture HD. Why did I go with Elgato again? Well, I am a Mac user, and so I wanted something that was well supported on Mac. But the good news is all you Windows users can use this too. Elgato Game Capture HD works just fine on Windows, fully supported. More than that, this is a really nice device because it captures HDMI, component, composite, S video, a bunch of different formats. It goes, I mean, it, it literally goes from the NES all the way to, to what's modern today. And if you like to stream live gameplay, the software does that too. Moving into more modern consoles, say the Xbox 360 or the PlayStation 3, I do a mix of component and HDMI depending on the model. I actually own the original Xbox 360, which does not have HDMI out, so component works just fine. And then when you get to the, the current generation of consoles, the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, the Wii U, well, you can do HDMI as well. So again, the, the Elgato works perfectly here. Now, before moving away from consoles, I feel like I should mention also some of these clone systems like the Retron 5. The reason why those are so handy is because they take old systems like the NES, the Super NES, the Genesis, but also systems like the Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance, and they emulate the hardware and output it to HDMI. That is perfect for capturing this old gameplay footage in a really high resolution. I do it all the time. Now it's not perfect and some people like it, some people don't, but if you do this a lot, it can be very handy. So that was consoles. Let's talk about capturing footage on a PC. I mentioned that I'm a Mac user. I actually have Steam on my, my iMac here and play lots of games on it. And it's actually pretty easy to capture footage on a Mac. Uh, you can use QuickTime, which is built into the operating system. You can capture as much of the screen as you want. It's built in, it's super easy. Or you can use a program called I Show You by White Shiny Box. If you've watched one of my Steam Hidden Gems videos, that video is a mix of me and Josh. And my buddy Josh is actually on a brand new Windows PC. And the way he captures footage for games is using a program called Fraps. Works really well, it's not too expensive. The other thing he's done in a pinch is use the software that's built into his NVIDIA video card. But what about capturing footage from say old DOS games? I love my old DOS games. The best way to do that is using DOSBox. DOSBox is an open source free piece of software that runs on pretty much every single thing. Actually, most of my DOS games that I play, I actually run on my Mac using DOS emulation. It works flawlessly and DOSBox has screen capture built into it. But I do have an old PC computer that runs a version of Windows XP on it. And the way I capture footage with that is an old ATI video card that has video out. It does S video out. And again, I just capture it with the Elgato. It works great. Now we get to the hard part. How do you capture handhelds? We're talking about the Game Boy. We're talking about the Atari Lynx, the Sega Game Gear. How do you capture that stuff? Well, unfortunately, there's no great way to do that. Now, on most of my videos, honestly, I do emulation because it just looks so much better than trying to point and shoot. You know, holding a, a, a camcorder while someone's trying to play a handheld, 
You can do it in a pinch, and a lot of people do, and I've done it in the past. Uh, Reggie and I actually did it with the Neo Geo Pocket Color, but I gotta tell you, it is a pain in the butt. <laughs> I remember that shoot very well. I was, I was hunkered over him for like 40 minutes trying to zoom in while he played these games. It was just, I mean, it's cool, but it just doesn't, I don't know if it's worth it. So when it comes to handhelds, I definitely prefer emulation. And then finally, occasionally I like to do videos on iOS and Android games. These are mobile games you'll play on your smartphone or your tablet. Now, how do you capture that gameplay footage? Well, again, on a Mac, it's pretty easy because it's built into the operating system if you have iOS. You just simply launch QuickTime and it just supports it. You can just capture the footage right there. Uh, in the past, I have used a program called Reflector by Squirrels. Now that runs on Mac and PC and it allows you to capture both uh, iOS and Android. So definitely check it out. All right, well, that's a look at how I capture gameplay footage for my channel. Now, as I mentioned, I'm mostly Mac, and so a lot of these things are geared towards that. The good news is that most of you will be on PCs and you have many more options. And so I'd love to see people down in the comments below share how they capture footage uh, with the other people that might be interested in it, because I'd certainly like to see it as well. All right, thanks for watching my channel. Thanks for subscribing and take care. If you like this video, I happen to have more on my channel, including one that covers game room tips, setup and storage on the cheap. I give away all my secrets in that. Another video you might like is YouTube tips and tricks as well. How to do better lighting, camera suggestions, and a lot more. <laughs>